Anna Soubry, Heidi Allen, Sarah Wollaston and Nick Bowles, and in which Dominic Greed is seemingly no longer welcome, is a party that is in a profound existential crisis. The cause of this crisis is plain for all to see. The Prime Minister has been pressing on the party and the country a deal that not only fails to meet the promises that were made in the referendum in 2016, but is transparently, obviously, inferior to the deal we already have as members of the European Union. She's been arguing for a deal which undermines our economic and political interests, and which doesn't even have the merit of offering an end to the current crisis. On the contrary, accepting her deal would commit the UK to years of bad-tempered arguments sucking the life out of our politics and our communities. We must be clear where the responsibility lies for causing this Brexit malaise. Lies at the door of those people, some of whom still sit in the Cabinet, who peddled a prospectus for Brexit that could never be delivered. It is the responsibility of an extremist faction in the Conservative Party, which includes many former members of UKIP, which, have, and which has captured many constituency parties. But it is also, and I am sorry to say this, it is also the fault of the Prime Minister herself, who has listened too much to the ultras and not enough to those beyond the Conservative Party who do not share its obsession with Brexit. She has relied too much on a diminishing band of people who do not share her values and whose objectives are simply delusional. Her decision yesterday to seek the support of Jeremy Corbyn is a belated recognition of what her chief whip says has been inevitable for months. She cannot and should not aim to deliver Brexit without engaging with people from outside the Tory tribe. Although it's fraught with difficulty, this new approach does, I believe, offer a way forward which does not require her to accept all the objectives of avowed political opponents, any more than she accepts the objectives of all the people she's been dealing with in this process so far, but which is built on a key plank of Labour policy which Margaret's just set out and which the Prime Minister should accept. The idea of a confirmatory vote of the British people on any final deal has the potential to be a game changer. It's topped the poll in the indicative voting process in the House of Commons. It's endorsed by the Labour Party. On Monday, 15 Conservative MPs voted for it. And yesterday, the Chancellor of the Exchequer argued for it in Cabinet. In short, I believe a tide is running in favour of the argument that a confirmatory vote cannot be precluded from the proposals that are brought forward from the discussions between the <coughs> Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. Accepting the principle of a confirmatory vote would ensure that the European Union would agree to provide a sufficient time in the extension to Article 50 to allow a workable option to be developed and for it to be subjected to proper democratic <coughs> scrutiny. It would show, whatever the ultimate result, that our country has finally come to its senses after a spasm which has undermined respect for our democracy, both at home and abroad. There is, in, no, in truth, no prospect, in my view, of closure in the <coughs> Brexit debate which does not recognise the right of voters to have the final say. For nearly three years, Brexit policy, and with it key questions about our country's future, has been treated as the plaything of the factions within the Conservative Party. And it's time to call that to a halt. There's too much at stake. Instead of confining the discussion to an ever-diminishing band of diehards, it is time to open the window and let in some fresh air. I don't believe that Theresa May wants to leave the European Union with no deal. And I don't believe either that she wants to hang a disastrous Brexit around the neck of the Conservative Party. So the Prime Minister faces a stark choice. 
She can either use her talks with Jeremy Corbyn as a cover for persisting with a discredited, discredited strategy of running down the clock, or she can recognise at the 59th minute that she has the opportunity to bring parliament and country together by accepting the Labour policy of giving the people the right to the final say. The stakes are toweringly high for Theresa May, for the Conservative Party, and most importantly, for all of us.